Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the All This Math YouTube channel. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you share the video, and make sure you even drop something in the comments. All right? Today's lesson. Today's lesson, we're talking about rounding numbers, right? More specifically, we're going to round a number to the nearest thousand. Round the number to the nearest thousand. All right? What is the number we're dealing with? We're dealing with 10,843. 10,843, all right? We round it to the nearest thousand. So we're gonna do this in a couple different ways, actually three different ways. What does that look like though? The first way, we're gonna deal with just the basic algorithm, which gives us the, which we use the rules for rounding, all right? Second way, we're gonna use a number line. The third way, we're gonna use a number line with a, what I call a rounding hill, right? A rounding hill, I'm gonna show you what that look like. All right, so the first way with the algorithm, since we round it to the nearest thousand, that means we would need to find the thousands place, all right? In 10,843, we need to find the digit. Notice I didn't say number. The digit that's in the thousands place. So this zero is in the thousands place. This three is in the ones place. That means there's three ones in this number. There are four tens in this number. That's why the four is in the tens place. There are eight hundreds in this number. That's why the eight is in the hundreds place, right? Because this is not really an eight. This really represents 800 or the fact that there are eight hundreds. 800s, plural, hundreds with an S at the end. There are zero thousands in this number, but there's one 10,000. There's one group of 10,000. When you put them all together, you get 10,843. So let's underline the zero because that's the place that we're rounding to. All right. So let's underline the zero like that. So you can do that on your paper if you're following along, right? Now, the digit that's to the right of the zero determines what I'm going to do with the zero, not the digit to the left. The digit to the right, immediately to the right. So not the four and not the three. The digit immediately to the right, this eight, this eight right here, is going to tell us what I'm going to do to the zero. All right, so I'm going to circle that. Now, because this is what I call the five and over crew, right? It's a number that's five, six, seven, eight, or nine, right? It's one of those digits, right? That means that the zero is going to go up. That means we're going to round up, right? We're going to round up. Now, the question is, when we round up, what number are we going to round to? All right, now let's think about what our choices are. When we round, we only got two choices, either to round down to a lower number or round up to the next higher number in the thousands. So 10,843 is in between 10,000 and 11,000. 10,000 and 11,000, just think about it. Now, how do I know that? How should you know that? Think about it. What if you was counting by thousands? So as we're rounding to the nearest thousand, what if we're counting by thousands? If we start at zero, we go zero, then we go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, then 11,000. This number is in between 10,000 and 11,000. It's clearly in between 10,000 and 11,000. So that's our only two choices, right? So what this skill teaches you, in addition to helping you to be able to like estimate numbers or approximate numbers, Right? So you can estimate when you do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It makes the math easier. It helps you to make choices. Because in life, a lot of times we got two choices, but we got to make the right choice, or at least the best choice in that given situation. So since this is an 8, this means we're going up to 11,000. So that's the answer. That's the answer, 11,000. Right? When we round, that's the nearest thousand. That's the thousand that's closer. Right? 10,843 is nearer or closer to 11,000 than it is to 10,000, right? So you got two choices. You're either going up to 11,000 or you're going to go down to 10,000, right? 11,000 is closer, so that's where you're going. All right, now let's do it a different way. Let's do it with a number line. So with the number line, first we draw the number line, a horizontal line, right? We could also think of this as the x-axis in the coordinate plane. You're going to deal with that when you get to pre-algebra, if you're not already taking pre-algebra. All right, so we got a number line. And then we're going to put three hash marks, just three, one to the far left, one to the far right, and one in the middle, far left, far right, and in the middle. All right. So far left is going to be the thousand that we could have run, that we could have possibly rounded down to, even though we didn't because we followed the rules. Right. So the thousand that's less than 10,843, the closest one that's less. So we're not dealing with 9,000. We're not dealing with 8,000. We're not dealing with 7,000. Six, five, four, we're not dealing with none of them because 10,000 is the closest. 10,000 is the closest, right? Now, what's the next larger? 
11,000. So that's going to go right here. Now, what do you think goes in the middle? If that's the middle, then that's like what we call the midpoint. The midpoint is the value that's halfway between 10,000 and 11,000. Halfway between 10,000 and 11,000. So halfway between 10,000 and 11,000 is 10,500. How do I know that? Because what's the difference between 11,000 and 10,000? Difference means the answer when you subtract. 11,000 minus 10,000 is 1,000. So that means, that means that the space between this hash mark and this hash mark is 1,000 units. But they're split equally into two equal parts. This equals this because this is a midpoint. So this is cut in half right here. So if that whole thing is 1,000, if I cut 1,000 in half, that's me basically doing division. Think about your division facts or how to do division. What's 1,000 divided by 2? 1,000 divided by 2 or 1,000 cut in half is 500. $1,000 split between two people evenly, each person get $500, right? Each person get $500, all right? So that's 500. So that means that this should be 10,000 plus 500, which is 10,500. Or you can think of it as 11,000 minus 500, which is still 10,500. So that's how you find what number goes right there, right? Whenever you're doing these problems. Now, um, now we got to take this number that we're trying to round and plot it where it belongs. So the question is, should it be between 10,000 and 10,500? Or should it be between 10,500 and 11,000? Now, look at that number. 843 is bigger than 500. Again, 843 is bigger than 500. So that means the number is going to be between here and here and actually closer to 11,000, right? So I'm going to put that right there. Let me make sure that's a comma. And now the question is, round to the nearest thousand, the nearest thousand. Here's the number. Which one? So you got to ask yourself the question. Which one is the nearest thousand? Is it this or is it this? Is it this or is it this? Which one is the nearest? I think it's this. Just look at it. From here to here, it's not that far. From here to here is a lot further. So this is the nearest thousand, eleven thousand. That's the nearest thousand. All right. And notice how this all these and all these zeros after this. Notice that it's not eleven thousand eight hundred forty-three. It's just eleven thousand. It's eleven with three zeros. Right. So we round up to the near, and again, that goes back to the way you can memorize this, because a lot of students make the mistake of they'll round up to 11, but then they'll still put the 843. That's incorrect. But you got to think about the concept, right? And that's one of the things that what a lot of parents call new math, right? That's what new math is supposed to help us with. Understand the concepts so we don't make these mistakes, right? Because if you understand the concept, you can figure stuff out and you can make sure everything you do makes sense, right? Because... What we're trying to do is we're trying to pick a number that is easier to deal with. 11,843 is not easier to deal with than 10,843. They're equally as complicated. The purpose of rounding is to create a number that has zeros in it, which is a number that's easier to deal with. Like 11,000 is easier to add than 10,843. 11,000 is easier to subtract than 10,843. It's easier to multiply because when you got zeros, it requires less work, right? It requires less work because a lot of times you can just drop the zeros. You don't got to worry about them, right? So if we wanted to estimate, right, if we wanted to add this 11,000 to another number that also had a bunch of zeros in it, the math would be a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? So again, that's why the answer should be 11,000, just 11,000, not 11,843. That's a common error. Make sure you don't make that mistake. All right, now the last way we're going to do this is you're going to use a rounding hill. It's really just a, mod a, a modification of what we just did with the number line. So we still gonna use the number line. We're gonna do the three hash marks. We're gonna put 10,000 right here. I'm gonna put 10K, right? And I'm gonna put 11K. So those of y'all that watch YouTube, you might see somebody, you know, channel that's got, you know, 10K views or 10K subscribers. The K stands for 1,000. That means you multiply 10 times 1,000, which equals 10,000. So the K stands for 1,000, because K is short for the prefix kilo from the metric system, all right? So kilo means 1,000, all right? Um, just like the capital M means million. Capital M means million. So if you watch YouTube a lot, you know the capital M next to a number means millions. That's how many millions. The capital K means that's how many thousands, all right? So 10 times 1,000 is 10,000. 11 times 1,000 is 11,000. See? Same thing. Same thing. they like synonyms, right? 10,000 and 10K, 11,000 and 11K. 
All right, bring down the 10,500. I could have put 10.5K. Yeah, matter of fact, let's do that. Let's be consistent. Let me be consistent real quick. So I got 10.5K, right? 10.5K right there. And now I'm going to draw a hill, right? So this is going to be the top of my hill, the pinnacle, the summit, the um, the altitude. No, that's not the altitude. Um, the zenith, right? It's a bunch of different words for it, right? And then you draw the lines down. It's going to look like a triangle, all right? It's going to look like a triangle. It's going to look like a hill, right? And then I'm going to plot 10,843, which is like right there. And that's where it would be, right? We could do a vertical line to go up. So 10,843 is right there. Now the question for you is, and I think this method is probably the most fun, right? This method right here is probably the most fun, right? Because when I do this method, I'm thinking, of, I mean, even as a teacher, I think this is the most fun. It's more fun than this and this. I mean, these are cool, but this is actually fun, I think. Because it's like, I think of this is like a basketball. And then I got to answer the question, is the basketball going to roll down this hill like this? Or is it going to roll up the hill, defy gravity, go up the hill to the top, and then roll down to get the 10K? No, it's going to roll down the hill, right? You know, or it could be a soccer ball. It could be a soccer ball. It could be a basketball. It could be you know, a baseball or whatever, right? It's going to roll down the hill and hit 11K, which is 11,000, right? So that's another way to find the answer. So we just found the answer three different ways. All right. And like I said, I like this way the best because it's more visual and you can kind of understand it. And I like to draw. You know, I know a lot of school children like to draw. You know, think of this as like art class. You know what I'm saying? Like you could draw it, make it. You know, put some color in it, whatever you want to do, you know, but it's a way for you to visualize what happens when you're rounding numbers. OK, so, yeah, practice, practice some with that and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.